From Princess Leia's outfit being way too revealing, to a Lego set with an illegal smuggling operation, here are some of the 18 plus easter eggs you've probably missed. Lego's license sets are super packed with sneaky surprises. Take for instance the 2022 release of the Office set, because in this set there is a step in the instructions where you swap out a regular brick for a Technic brick with a hole, a nod to that iconic scene where a character punches a hole in the wall. And for fans of Portal 2, LEGO Dimensions finally let us peek inside those mysterious companion cubes. Spoiler alert, they're filled with four translucent red studs hinting that the cubes might be stuffed with unfortunate test subjects. Yikes. The LEGO Creator series is known for its clever and diverse sets, and the 2015 Detective Office is no exception. This three-story set with over 2,200 pieces is a storytelling masterpiece packed with crime and mystery. The plot follows a detective on a mission to uncover some illegal smuggling during the Prohibition era. But since it's Lego, the contraband isn't booze, it's actually cookies. The story comes to life through the building's intricate details, like a secret trapdoor behind the barber shop that smugglers use to move cookies to the pool hall through a hidden passage. The cookies are also baked right above the detective's office, and the smugglers go to great lengths to keep their operation quiet, if you know what I mean. And the pool hall where the cookies go down even has a secret door under the trophy case to keep everything on the down low. Plus, of course, this set features LEGO's very first mirror, which is pretty neat. Let's talk about now one of the silliest LEGO Easter eggs. The LEGO Homer Simpson brick head set has a little something extra inside of it. Usually, these brick head sets have a brain made from a 2x2 two two pink block, but not for Homer. If you're a fan of The Simpsons, you know that Homer isn't exactly the brightest bulb. You know, he's not the smartest person there is. So, for whatever reason, LEGO decided to have some fun with it and gave him a 1x1 one one block for his brain, which makes it a perfect nod to his character. Switching gears, LEGO really leaned into the Star Wars fandom with the Clone Trooper Command Station set. If you're familiar with Star Wars, you know about Order 66, which is the exact moment when all of the clones turned on the Jedi. Well, this LEGO set has exactly 66 pieces. It's probably not a coincidence either, it's more like a clever move by a hardcore Star Wars fan who designed it. Pretty dark, but it's not the only set with some interesting details, if you know what I'm saying. Take for instance the Portal of Atlantis set, which came out in 2010. On its own, it's pretty cool, but if you also have the 2007 Deep Sea Treasure Hunter set, you might notice something pretty eerie. Both sets feature a minifigure, but in the Portal of Atlantis set, there's a skeleton wearing the exact same outfit as the rider from the Treasure Hunter set. Even the helmet matches. It's a bit on the dark side, but it's not the only set with a twist. Now, here's an easter egg that is actually pretty easy to miss. Back in Star Wars with The Force Awakens, there's a scene where Finn, the Stormtrooper, has blood on his helmet. Well, that version of Finn became iconic, but when LEGO went ahead and made the Star Wars The Force Awakens game, they had to get rid of the blood. So, what did they actually do? Well, it turns out they swapped it with a green splotch of food on his helmet instead. Pretty classic LEGO humor, right? Speaking of cool LEGO details though, and still sticking to Star Wars, the original R2-D2 set from 2021 is packed with them. Do you remember the scene in Return of the Jedi where R2-D2 shoots Luke's lightsaber out of his head? Well, LEGO went ahead and made sure to hide a two-scale version of Luke's lightsaber inside R2-D2's head. That's a pretty awesome easter egg. But not all of LEGO's easter eggs are squeaky clean. In the Brick Bank set, there's a bank and also a laundromat. And here's the kicker. When you put money into the washing machine, it just drops right into the bank. Yeah, a not-so-subtle nod to money laundering there, LEGO. I mean, <laughs> who knew LEGO could teach kids about a financial crime? Aside from that, though, there is a funny little easter egg in the Rainforest Animal set. The set has a beautifully designed parrot, and naturally, you get some brown pellets as the bird food. But if you end up feeding the parrot, you'll find out that what goes in must also come out. Yup, the bird poops the food right out after you feed it. I'm not joking. I mean, there's the proof. All right, but now let's just dive right into the Lego Haunted House Fairground set, which is actually Mansion Von Baron from the classic Lego Adventures theme. The mansion's doors open on their own, a pretty classic style from horror movies. And right inside, it's packed with artifacts facts from Baron Von Baron's adventures. That, that's kind of a mouthful, Baron Von Baron. There's an updated Sphinx head from set 5978, the Sphinx secret surprise. You'll also find Anubis dog statue heads above the organ, and an obelisk ruin that spells out Lego in hieroglyphics if you read it upside down. That's pretty clever, right? The attic has another cool build to it that references the Yeti's hideout from the Orient Expedition theme, plus a mysterious blue jewel containment mechanism that no one has quite figured out yet. If you have any theories just share them down
down below. The curse painting in the set features Baron Von Baron and Pharaoh Hotep from the Adventurers theme. The Baron is holding the Regu Ruby, a gem with magical powers. All three main jewels from the Adventurers theme are hidden in this set, making it a gold mine for fans. In the attic, there's a skeleton hanging upside down with a top hat, and it could be Baron Von Baron's partner, Sam Sinister, whom he might have betrayed. The skeleton is also holding a sextant, a navigation tool first seen in the Adventurers theme. And in the front yard, there are two graves, one likely for the Baron and another marked TC, which are the initials of the designer Tiago Caterino, who has also worked on the 2019 Gingerbread House and the 2018 Lego Ideas Ship in a Bottle set. That's pretty interesting. The minifigures include two spooky twins, possibly a nod to The Shining. One of the girls has NB on her jacket, a reference to Newbury from the Hidden Side theme. In the Lego Indiana Jones, the original adventures from 2007 though, Indy's whip isn't just for fighting bad guys or swinging from chandeliers. Nope, he's got a new trick up his sleeve. He is using it to pull characters in for a kiss. And yes, this charming move earns you an achievement called How Dare You Kiss Me? Because of course, why not let Indiana Jones be a smooth operator too? Imagine swinging your whip and snagging a kiss instead of a treasure. Indy's got Riz. Now hold on, we're not done with Mr. Jones just yet because here we've got the Indiana Jones Temple of the Golden Idol set. This 2008 masterpiece brings back the iconic temple scene from the Indiana Jones movies. If you're a fan of the 1981 classic Raiders of the Lost Ark, this one's bound to hit you right in the nostalgia area. This set includes minifigures of Indy, Belloc, Satipo, and a Gito's warrior. Hopefully I said those right. Lego nailed the details too, even down to Indy's hat and Satipo's face wrinkles. Next, there's the slave Princess Leia minifigure. It recreates Leia's scene in Jabba the Hutt's palace from Return of the Jedi. And let's just say that the outfit is a bit too revealing for the young ones, but for adult Star Wars fans, it's a collectible worth having, I guess. But now, check out the Lego Titanic set. This massive build pays tribute to the legendary ship minus the iceberg incident. It's one of the priciest Lego sets ever too, but totally worth it. The only bummer? Well, there's no minifigures of Jack and Rose. But hey, at least this version stays afloat on water, like literally. I mean, here's the proof. But anyways, are you feeling any more nostalgic? Well, the Lego typewriter set is a tribute to the old school typewriter used by Lego's founder. This set even has a working center bar that moves up and down, making it feel like you've time traveled back to the pre-digital days. For all the Batman fans out there though, the Lego Batcave Shadow Box takes us back to Batman Returns from 1992. It's got everything you need to recreate your own mini Batcave, including movable items and seven minifigures. Seven! It's like having Gotham City right on your desk, minus the crime, of course. The Lego Lord of the Rings Rivendell set is a massive 6,167 piece project that'll keep you busy for a while. Only grown-ups with serious patience can handle this one. It's like getting lost in Middle Earth, minus the orcs and the endless walking. But I only put it as 18 plus just because of how advanced it is. Then there's also the Lone Ranger's Red Harrington minifigure, complete with her trusty peg leg. She's not any old minifigure, though rumor has it that she's won every Wild West race with that leg of hers. Talk about a secret weapon. For car enthusiasts, the Lego Land Rover Defender is the ultimate building challenge. It's so complex, even the perfectionists might be tempted to peek at the instructions. If you've got the patience though, you'll end up with a pretty sweet model that'll make you feel like a true champion. And if classic video games are more your speed, well the Lego Pac-Man arcade set will take you straight back to the 90s. This set is so spot on that you might start thinking the ghosts are actually plotting against you. And spoiler, they totally are. The Lego Taj Mahal set is another masterpiece designed for those who appreciate history but also architecture. It's a romantic monument made of bricks perfect for anyone who wants to recreate the famous symbol of love without the long flight to India. I mean, who wants that? And then there's the Lego Friends apartment set from 2019. Kids might see it as just another playhouse, but for hardcore Friends fans, it's a dream come true. With all your favorite characters and an Instagram-worthy setup, it'll make you feel like you're right back in Central Perk. Moving on and going back to video games, the Lego Nintendo NES set is a love letter to the original Mario Bros. game, and I actually have this set. You get level 1-1 recreated in all its plastic pixel glory. But the real secret? Well, during the build, if you peek under the console's hood on the right side, you'll actually spot the layout of level 1-2. You know the second level where it's underground? It's exactly that. I'd say it's perfectly fitting since that's the level all about crawling through sewers. LEGO also loves to get playful with license plates though. Take the London bus set for instance. Its plates includes numbers from the set itself, and the letters are a shout out to the designer, Morton Graf Wong. Then we have the 
Volkswagen Beetle set, with California plates that read P51AK1, which is another sneaky nod to its designer, Mike Pisiaski. I hope I said that name right. They even toss in Australian plates as a wink to another designer, Mel Kadik. In 2022, LEGO celebrated its 90th birthday by reimagining some classic sets, like the Galaxy Explorer. Now, eagle-eyed fans did notice the Blacktron logo on the ship's radar, a callback to the classic space baddies. And just when you thought that was a cool little reference, well, LEGO dropped the Blacktron Cruiser set in 2023. Turns out, the cruiser's radar shows the Galaxy Explorer setting up what's basically the LEGO version of a space showdown. Now, LEGO's been pretty good about not repeating their minifigure designs, but they've definitely recycled a few characters. Take Series 5's Lumberjack, for instance, who reappears in Series 14 as a wolf guy? I mean, he has the same ripped red flannel and jeans, just a little hairier. And if that wasn't enough, the Series 1 skater got zombified in a Lego book, because why the heck not? In Lego City, there's a whole family saga unfolding. Back in 2016, Lego released their People Pack set, where we meet some proud parents with their newborn. Two years later, though, the kid's grown into a preteen in another set. Fast forward three more years, and now he's a grown man with a family of his own. Apparently, Lego minifigures age faster than dog years, which means you might want to check on that minifig that you bought in 2009. They're probably due for retirement. Now, the Lego movie sets are basically Easter egg central. They, they're just packed with it. But the rescue reinforcement set deserves a shout out in specific. One minifig's rocking a black Tron shirt, and another has got a Fabu Land logo, a deep cut for the old school Lego fans out there. Lego's also got a habit of bringing characters back across different themes. Case in point, Infernox from Nexo Knights. Turns out he's a throwback to a smaller, less fiery version from the Power Miners line. Somehow, he managed to level up from a tiny underground baddie to a full-blown fire demon. Pretty impressive. And when LEGO decided to turn the office into a set, they didn't hold back on the inside jokes. Sure, you've got the obvious ones like Dwight Stapler and Jello, but if you squint, you'll see that Stanley's crossword puzzle hides the initials of the set's designers. That's a pretty sneaky detail right there. I wouldn't have noticed that. And LEGO designer Fiorella Groves decided to hide an Easter egg in her world map set. It's very subtle for sure, but with some detective work, fans actually uncovered a secret. The Cantonese characters for Lee tucked away off the coast of Japan. Just a little nod to her love of Chinese culture, hidden right in plain sight. Now, did you know that there technically aren't any pink Lego bricks? Well, Lego started in Denmark where the word pink doesn't even exist. Oddly enough, there is a Lego piece called Flamingo Pink, but it wasn't even used for flamingos. It was for some rare pink flowers back in 2006. It only showed up, however, in two sets, so if you have any, you're definitely sitting on a pretty rare color. But Flamingo Pink isn't the only Lego color with a story, and that's also going to be Sand Green. This shade debuted with the Statue of Liberty set in 2000. Though Sand Green bricks appear in hundreds of different sets, this one's special because it gives you a bunch of them in one go. The set itself is now worth around $6,000, making those Sand Green bricks even pricier. Speaking of green, let's now talk about Minecraft. Ever notice the Lego Minecraft Frozen Peak set? Well, Steve, our hero, is rocking bright green armor. But here's the thing, Minecraft doesn't even have green armor. It doesn't have emerald armor. That, that doesn't exist. I mean, sure, you can dye leather green, but it doesn't look like what Steve's wearing here. I mean, just take a look at this. Someone clearly dropped the ball on this one and maybe didn't play Minecraft enough. Lego is also known for getting creative with their figures. Take the mobile police dog training set, for example. The dog trainer figure looks a bit odd because Lego repurposed a cactus minifigure. I'm not even joking. Lego took a cactus minifigure to create the protective suit. Clever, but it still looks pretty goofy. I mean, it looks kind of off if you ask me. And ever notice how versatile Lego pieces can be? Well, take a look at the Lego sausage piece, for example. It's been used as flower stems, eyebrows, and even structural supports. I mean, who knew a sausage could be so multifunctional? Lego has also repurposed frogs in creative ways, most notably in the bonsai tree set, because every pink leaf on that tree is actually a frog. No joke, it's a frog piece that's pink. And once you see it, you can't really unsee it. The A-frame cabin set has some cool details too, like a spider in the attic and an outdoor shower. But the funniest part? Well, the stones supporting the house are made from Thor's hammer pieces. I'm not even joking, the stones supporting the house are Thor's hammers. Looks like Asgard really took a tumble. In the Ultra Agents 2014 set, the Hurricane Heist Cyclone vehicle has a codec printed on its windshield. It's a nod to Hiro Kojima, the mastermind behind the Metal Gear Solid series, who's a big LEGO fan and even used LEGO in his game development. That's a pretty cool easter egg. And in the 2008 Back to Indiana Jones and the Lost Tomb set, 
set, there is a sticker with R2-D2 and C-3PO from Star Wars. This is a nod to George Lucas, who created both Star Wars and also Indiana Jones, and I guess it fits perfectly with the movie's theme. A fun one, though, is in the Alpha Team line from 2001. The main villain, Ogle, is just a name that spells Lego backwards. I mean, take O-G-E-L, spell it backwards, and what do you get? L-E-G-O. Lego. It's like they were lazy and just couldn't come up with a better name, so they just made him a tribute to the company for whatever reason. And in 2012, the Dino HQ set, there is a cool Easter egg where a character named Josh Thunder shares the same last name as Johnny Thunder, Lego's old adventurer. The 2012 Lego book even confirms that Josh is Johnny's descendant. Plus, there's Solomon Blaze, who shows up in the Galaxy Squad sets and then reappears in the Ultra Agent sets. It's like Lego's own little timeline, like their own little, you know, multiverse or universe, whatever you want to call it. In the Back to the Future Time Machine set from 2013, there is a nod to Lego's history with a display saying January 28th, 1958, which is the same day Lego painted its plastic bricks. That's actually a cool little fun fact. And now with Marvel, the Captain America Civil War Airport Battle set is just full of Easter eggs. I mean, just take a look at all of the stickers on the cargo, which reference Stark Industries, Hammer, AIM, Sokovia, The Lund, and Wakanda. It's like a Marvel and Lego trivia contest all in one. Finally, here are two Lego Easter eggs that are tributes to those we've lost. The 2016 Ghostbusters HQ set includes a wall sticker with RIP HR honoring Harold Ramis, who played Egon Spengler in the original Ghostbusters. Well, that's at least pretty cool. And the 2011 Alien Conquest Earth Defense HQ set pays tribute to Nate Nelson, a beloved Lego community member who passed back away in 2010. His creations were incredible, nothing short of it, and it's nice to see that Lego honors him with a shout out in a set. So anyways, which one was your favorite 18 plus Easter egg? Let me know in the comments below and also click this video right here.